all the apostles were gathered together and divided the countries among themselves, casting lots. And it fell to Matthias to go to the land of the Anthropophagi. Now the man of that city ate no bread nor drank wine, but ate the flesh and drank the blood of men. And every stranger who landed there they took, and put out his eyes, and gave him a magic drink which took away his understanding. So, when Matthias arrived, he was treated, but the drink had no effect on him, and he remained praying for help in the prison. And the light came, and a voice, Matthias, my beloved, received sight, 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 and he saw. And the voice continued, I will not forsake you. Abide twenty-seven days, and I will send Andrew to deliver you and all the rest. And the Saviour went up into heaven. Matthias remained singing praises. When the executioners came to take victims, he kept his eyes closed. They came and looked at the ticket on his hand and said, Three days more and we will slay him. For every victim had a ticket tied on his hand to show the date when his thirty days would be fulfilled. When twenty-seven days had elapsed, the Lord appeared to Andrew in the country where he was teaching and said, In three in days, days my is slain by the mighty Go, go, go deliver them. How is it possible for me to go there in time? Early tomorrow, go to the shore, and you will find a ship. And he left him. They went, Andrew and his disciples, and found a little boat and three men. The pilot was the Lord, and the other two were angels. Andrew asked where they were going. To the land of the man Peters. I would go there too. Every man avoids that place. Why will you go? I have an errand to do, and if you can, take us. He said, Come on board. Andrew said, I must tell you we have neither money nor provisions. How then do you travel? Our master forbade us to take money and provisions. If you'll do us this kindness, tell us. If not, we will look for another ship. If these are your orders, come on board and welcome. I desire truly to have disciples of Jesus on my ship. So they embarked. Jesus ordered three loaves to be brought, and Andrew summoned his disciples to partake. But he could not answer him, for they were disturbed with the sea. So Andrew explained to the pilot, and he offered to set them ashore. But they refused to leave Andrew. Jesus said, Tell your disciples some of the wonders your master did, to encourage them, for we are going to set sail. So they did, and Jesus steered. And Andrew told the disciples about the stilling of a storm, and prayed in himself that they might sleep, and they fell asleep. Andrew said to Jesus, Tell me your heart. Sixteen years did I sail the sea, and this is the seventeenth, and I never saw such tearing. The ship is as if on land. Jesus said, I too have often sailed the sea and been in danger. But because you are a disciple of Jesus, the sea knows you and is still. Andrew praised God that he had met such a man. Jesus said, Tell me Tell why the Jews did not believe in your master. Andrew enumerated the miracles, yet he said the Jews did not believe. Perhaps he did not do the signs before the high priests. Yes, he did, both openly and privately, and they would not believe. What were the signs he did in secret? Oh, man of the spirit of questioning, why do you tempt me thus? I do not tempt you, but my soul rejoices to hear his wonderful works. I will tell you then. Once, when we the twelve went with our Lord to a heathen temple, that he might show us the ignorance of the devil, the high priest saw us and said, Why do you follow this man, who says he is the son of God? As God a son, is not this Joseph and Mary's son, and his brothers are James and Simon? And our hearts were weakened. And Jesus perceived it, and took us apart into the wilderness, and did mighty signs, and strengthened our faith. And he said to the priests, Come and see, for he has convinced us. And the priests came to the Eden temple, and Jesus showed us the form of the heavens, that we might learn whether it were true or no. Thirty men of the people and four priests were with us. On the right and left of the temple, Jesus saw two sphinxes carved and turned to us and said, Behold the form of the heaven. These are like the cherubim and seraphim in heaven. 
and he said to the Sphinx on the right, You semblance of that which is in heaven, made by prophetsmen, come down and convince these priests, whether I be God or man. It came down and said, O oh, foolish sons of Israel, this is God who made man. Tell me now that I am a stone image, better are the temples than your synagogue. Or priests purify themselves seven days from women, and approach not the temple, but you come straight from the fire. The temple will abolish your synagogues and become the churches of the only begotten Son of God. The priest said, It speaks by magic. You heard it say that this man spoke with Abraham. How is that possible? Jesus said to the Sphinx, Go to the cave of Mambre and call Abraham. Bid him rise with Isaac and Jacob and come to the temples of the Jebusians to convict the priests. It went and called. And the twelve patriarchs rose and came out. To which of us have you called? Not to you, but to the three patriarchs. Go back and rest. They went back, and the three patriarchs came and convicted the priests. Jesus bade them return and set the Sphinx back to its place. But the priests did not believe, and many other wonders he did. Jesus, seeing that they were near land, leaned his head on one of the angels and ceased speaking to Andrew. And Andrew went to sleep. Then Jesus ordered the angels, Take the man and lay them outside the city of the man eaters and return. And then all departed to heaven. Andrew awoke and looked about him and realized what had happened, and rose to his disciples. They told him their dream. Eagles came and brought them into paradise, and they saw the Lord on his throne and angels, and the three patriarchs, and David singing. And you the God of us, the Lord of the And you rejoiced, and prayed the Lord to show himself. And Jesus appeared in the form of a beautiful young child. And you asked pardon for his boldness on the ship. Jesus reassured him, and told him what trials awaited him in the city, and encouraged him to endure them and departed. They entered the city unseen and went to prison. Seven guards fell dead at his prayer. At the sign of the cross the doors opened. He found Matthias and they greeted each other. Andrew looked at the victims who were naked and eating grass and smote his breast and reproached the devil. How long have you fought with men? You did cause Adam to be cast out of paradise. You did cause this bread that was on the table to be turned into stones. Again, you did enter the mind of the angels and cause them to be defiled with women. And you maddened their savage sons, the giants, who devour men on the earth, so that God sent the flood. Then they both prayed, and they laid their hands on the prisoners and restored first their sight and then their sense. And Andrew ordered them to go out of the city and remain under a fig tree and await him. There were 270 men and 49 women. And Andrew commanded a cloud, and he took Matthias and the disciples and brethren to the mouth where Peter was teaching, and there they remained. Andrew went out and walked in the city and sat down by a brazen pillar with a statue on it to see what would happen. The executioners came and found the prison empty and the guards dead and reported to the rulers. They said, Go and fetch the seven dead men for us to eat today and assemble tomorrow. The old man and we will cast lots for seven a day and eat them, until we can fit out ships and set and collect people to eat. So they fetched the seven corpses. There was a furnace in the midst of the city and a great barrel for the blood. They put the man on the barrel. A voice came. Andrew, Andrew look, look at this. this. Andrew prayed and the man's swords fell and their hands turned to stone. The rulers cried. There are wizards in the city. Go and gather the old man, for we are hungry. They found 250, and lots were cast for seven. One of these said, Take my young son and kill him instead of me. They asked leave of the rulers, and it was granted. And the old man said, I have a daughter, take her too, and spare me. So the children were brought to the barrel, begging for their lives, but there was no pity. Andrew prayed, and again the swords fell from the man's hands, and there was much alarm. Then came the devil in the guise of an old man and said, Go to you, you will all die of hunger, but 
Search now and look for a stranger named Andrew. He's the cause of the trouble. Andrew was looking at the devil, but the devil could not see him. And Andrew said, O Belial, my lord will humble thee to the abyss. The devil said, I hear your voice, noble. Where is the devil I see not? Andrew said, Aren't you called Amahel because you are blind? The devil said, Look for the man who spoke to me, for it is he. And he shut the gates and looked everywhere, but could not find him. The Lord appeared and said to Andrew, Show thyself to them. He rose and said, I am Andrew, whom you seek. And he ran and took him and waited how to kill him. If we cut off his head, it will not pain him enough. Let us put a rope round his neck and drag him through the streets every day till he dies. And divide his body and eat it. They did so, and his flesh was torn, and his blood flowed, and he cast him into prison with his hands bound behind him. And so they did next day, and he wept and cried to the Lord. The devil took seven other devils, whom Andrew had driven out from places in the neighborhood, and he came to Andrew, and the devil said, Now we will kill you, but your masters whom Herod soon. And he said, Now my children, kill him! But he saw the seal on his forehead, and were afraid, and said, You kill him, for we cannot. And one of them said, If you cannot kill him, let us mock him. And he stood before him, and taunted him with his helplessness, and he wept. And the voice said, Andrew, why are you weeping? And it was the devil's voice in disguise. And Andrew answered and said, I am weeping because the Lord commanded me, saying, Be patient patient towards towards them. And the devil said, If you can do anything, do it. And Andrew answered and said, Is it for this, then, that you do these things to me? But forbid it that I should disobey the commandment of my Lord. For if the Lord shall make for me a charge in the city, I shall chastise you as you deserve. And having heard this, they fled. Next day the people dragged him again, and he cried out to the Lord, Here are your words, a hair of your heads shall not perish, yet my flesh is torn from me. And the voice said in Hebrew, My words shall not pass away, look behind you. And he saw great fruit bearing trees, growing up where his flesh and blood had fallen. And he took him back to prison and said, Perhaps he will die tomorrow. And the Lord came and took his hand, and he rose up whole. And in the prison was a pillar, and on it a statue. Andrew went to it, and spread out his hands seven times, and said, Fear the sign of the cross, and let the statue pour forth water as a flood. And say not, I am stone, and I am not worthy to praise the Lord, for the Lord fashioned us from the earth. But you are pure, because that of you he gave the tables of the law. And the statue poured water out of its mouth, as from a canal, and it was bitter and corroded man's flesh. In the morning all the people began to flee. The water killed their cattle and their children. Andrew said, Let Michael wall the city about with fire. A cloud of fire came and surrounded it, and they could not escape. The water came up to their necks and consumed their flesh. They cried and lamented until he saw their spirit was crushed and told the alabaster statue to cease. And Andrew went out of the prison, the water parting before him, and the people prayed for mercy. The old man who had given up his children came and besought him, but Andrew said, I wonder at you, you and the fourteen executioners shall be swallowed up and see the places of torment and of peace. And he went as far as the great barrel and prayed, and the earth opened and swallowed up the water and the old man along with the executioners, and all feared greatly, but he consoled them. Then he ordered them to bring all who had been killed by the water, but there were too many, so he prayed and revived them. Then he drew out the plan of a church and baptized them and gave them the Lord's precepts. And they begged him to stay with them a little, but he refused, saying, I must first go to my disciples. He left and they lamented with grief. And Jesus appeared in the form of a beautiful child and reproved him for leaving them, and told him to stay seven days, and then he should go with his disciples to the country of the barbarians, and then return and bring the man out of the abyss. And Andrew turned and went into the city, saying, I thank you, my Lord Jesus Christ, who wishes to save every soul, that you have not allowed me to go forth out of the city in mine anger. And when he had come into the city, they, seeing him, rejoiced with exceeding great joy. 
and he stayed there seven days, teaching and confirming them in the Lord Jesus Christ. And the seven days having been fulfilled, it came to pass, while the blessed Andrew was going out, all came together to him, from the child even to the elder, and set him on his way, saying, There, there is one God, God, the God of Andrew, and, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, who alone does wonders. To him be glory and strength forever and ever. Amen.